guys. Welcome Hi. back to day two of our big epic Facebook Live Thanksgiving question and answer session. Um, I'm Jeanette, you guys know my friend Grant. And today we've got our friend VJ from the culinary team in too. We've got everybody who wasn't out of town for the holiday yet, and we are all here to help answer all of your questions for Thanksgiving this Thursday. Um, it's only two days away. I think we've got some really great fun recipes to show you, but make sure to comment and ask any and all Thanksgiving questions. We are here to help set you guys up for success this week. So comment away um, and let us know what you want to see. I'm going to get things kicked off with a cocktail. Yes. What do we think? <laughs> um, it is the holidays, and um, I'm going to show you guys had to make and I'm not gonna brag but this is kind of my world famous like autumn cocktail this is my apple cider margarita and um, I know these two have been dying to try it all morning um, so what it is is actually um, what I like to do is when I'm entertaining especially for a big holiday I love to make cocktails in a pitcher so that um, you're not having to go back and forth to the bar every time to make That's someone a, a cocktail. Yeah. So you just throw this out with a bucket of ice and some cups and some garnish, and everybody knows to make their own cocktails. Yeah. Um, so I've got about four cups of some apple cider, just from the farmer's market, some nice cloudy apple cider. And now I'm gonna add in um, some lemon juice, some fresh squeezed lemon juice, a little bit of fresh squeezed orange juice. Ooh, we wanna say uh, hello to Lynn. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Lynn. Hey, Lynn. Um, and Michelle's saying leftovers are the best part. Michelle will stay tuned because Grant and VJ both have some phenomenal resover resover <laughs> recipes for you guys. <laughs> and I promised you guys yesterday I was going to show you how to make green bean casserole, so I'm going to make that a little bit later too. Um, so now I'm just going to add in this perfectly acceptable for the children. <laughs> Before you add in a little bit of orange liqueur, mm. and I don't normally measure when I'm making cocktails, but something about making it in a pitcher was like I need I need to measure and yeah. make sure that the proportions. Now, are would you be right. say that this cocktail is pitcher perfect? I might. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Um, hello to Yolanda Ooh. from Hi, somewhere Yolanda. in Texas. Hello, Yolanda. Hey, Yolanda. What up? I think I got a little advantage. Um, and Guy <laughs> from New Jersey. Hey, Guy. Hey, Guy Hi. from New Jersey. Um, I'm a gal from New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. All right, so then that is my pitcher. I really filled it to the top here, you guys. Wow. Just um, no, I'm going to pour <laughs> some. My apple cider margaritas in a pitcher. Do we put some orange um, in these Yeah, I'm just going to garnish with a little orange. If you've got some cinnamon sticks around, too, um, that's always a nice garnish. Do you want them in half or I, No, I like, I like a whole okay. a whole orange. Try I'm going to try not to spill this everywhere and make these for you guys. Um, I'm making a mess on Facebook Live. If you guys are just Ooh, tuning yummy. in, it is day two of our big, here you go, VJ, um, Facebook Live question and answer session. So write in and ask us any questions you guys have for Thanksgiving. We are here to help you guys have the best Thanksgiving yet. Thank you for slamming my garnish into the Um head. Just comment and ask if you could do a frozen Ooh, version absolutely. of this. How would you feel about doing that? I might just take everything, whoopsies, everything that's in this glass and toss it in the blender. Just, you know, throw in a little bit of ice. Or actually, you can freeze um, your apple cider into ice cubes. Um, Guy commented too. from New Jersey and said okay. that he's coming to the show in January. Oh, great. How nice. Great. Guy, give us a wave. Yeah. You'll, you'll see us Looking running around set. You, Guy. All right, cheers, guys. Happy cheers. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Cheers. My work cheers. family and friends. Mmm. Mmm. Isn't that so good? Ooh, that I is know. good. It's, it's, it's delicious. just the cocktail of autumn, guys. It's yeah. really, really good. Um, Colleen wrote it and she said that she loves um, Grant and Jeanette. Hello, Colleen. Thank you. Hello. Um, all right, so now um, I'm going to pass the torch to BJ. And she is going to show us um, a leftover recipe that you really like to make the day after Thanksgiving, right? Yes. Um, so, guys, I grew up in Albania, and my grandma grandma used to make uh, potato koftes and meat koftes. And Thanksgiving leftover, it's one of those things where I can combine both of them together and make one big kofte. Basically, it's like a patty. Just uh, So, I have over here, I have stuffing, leftover stuffing. You can just mix that with... Um, some leftover mashed potatoes from what Grant did yesterday. Yeah, if you guys watched the um, Facebook Live yesterday, VJ is actually using all the leftovers from that yes. broadcast yesterday. But for people at home, they can just use their mashed potatoes or their stuffing, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. And right. then uh, I have uh, shredded um, dark meat. That's my favorite, but you can use white meat. <clears throat> oh yeah, kofte is basically a patty, a meat patty with uh, all your favorite herbs, mm. uh, bread, crumbs, anything. Uh, to this one, I'm gonna add some parsley. Um, might, might as well just use my hands. Yeah, why not? Because you, know, you do so much chopping hand. for Thanksgiving. The day yes. after, you just tear it up and throw it in there. Yes. Why not? And then depending on how wet your mashed potatoes are, I just add a little bit of a breadcrumb. Grant, do you mind if you just melt oh, sure. some butter for me? Yeah. And, you know, just use your hands. Get messy with it. It's fun. It's Thanksgiving. Um, Jean commented and said, what do you think of pumpkin pie milkshakes? I think ooh, that sounds ooh, delicious. that sounds delicious. Really yeah. good, Jean. So basically, I'm just going to form a little patty. Some little patties. 
VJ made me so one cute. of these for breakfast this morning, and it was a breakfast of champions. Yeah. It was so and then uh, once the butter is melted, I'm gonna be uh, searing them about two minutes on each side, and I'm gonna be frying an egg. Mm. And Grant yeah. has another great tea with these leftover. Yeah, I have some leftover leftover recipe right over here. I'm actually making um, a stuffing waffle what? um you guys may have seen this on the show before because this is one of rachel's favorite leftover recipes um so i'm basically making hers and it's super easy i feel like this is probably why it's so popular um basically you just take your waffle maker give it a spray with some cooking spray or you can just throw some butter in there too if you wanted and then you just take your leftover stuffing i'm just going to use my hands you form it into a nice big patty you put it right there and then you close your waffle maker and you want to close it nice and tight so that waffle gets really crispy and crunchy. And then you just let that cook until it's nice um, and brown and crunchy on the outside. It just takes a couple minutes. Um, and then for a nice topper, we're actually going to use our leftover cranberry sauce that I have right here. I'm going to throw that into a bowl. Um, if you guys watched the Facebook Live yesterday, you probably saw Tina make this. It's um, actually Scott Conan's recipe. He made it on the show not too long ago. Um, and it's with fresh cranberries, some ginger, some orange, and some Campari, which makes it kind of like mm. yummy and bitter. I love Campari. Yeah, it's yeah. really, really good. Um, and then to that, we're just going to add in some maple syrup. So that's going to be our nice sweet and sour topper for our stuffing waffle. Give that a stir. Um, and then since this is a breakfast, I like to top it with an egg. Because when you top it with an egg, it's breakfast, right? I'm going to grab oh, some of yeah. AJ's butter down here. Um, Rachel commented and said uh, hi to her daughter Shannon. She loves Rachel. Hi, Rachel and Shannon. Hello, Rachel Thank and Shannon. Thank you for watching. Um, and Becky said, help, how do I make potato salad? Um, we actually have a couple of potato salad recipes um, online. I made one over the summer that was really good. It was Ooh, made yeah. with, um, it was a bacon potato salad. So I just sauteed some bacon and some, uh, and a skillet. And then I used that to make a dressing for the potatoes. It was super yummy. Um, I love the idea of making potato salad for Thanksgiving. Yeah. It's like a nice swap out, a little like nice fresh, totally, right? fresh than mashed potatoes. I do love mashed potatoes, but I really like that idea. Um, Alright, so I'm just going to fry my eggs. So I have my egg frying over here. We have our cranberry uh, maple syrup heating up in this bowl, and we have our stuffing waffle. That'll yeah. be done in just about a minute or two. And then um, BJ's got her patties going yes. in the back. There's some like leftover Everybody's magic cooking. happening. Everybody's right cooking. Now. I but like you know, it. You're getting started on. This isn't actually a Thanksgiving dish, right? This is, yeah. This is Rachel's. I'm going to make uh, Rachel's recipe because it's actually the one I make for my family every Thanksgiving. This is um, Rachel's. It's not easy being green bean casserole, which is funny because so I want to say she did this on a she did this a few years back on a November show, and um, Kermit was actually the guest, so we called it um, Kermit the Frog was the guest. Oh, Kermit he, that Kermit. That Kermit. Like, yeah, no, you can't. Uh, <laughs> Kermit who? <laughs> um, Lori commented it said my orange products from Rachel look so Great. perfect for Thanksgiving. I know, right? I'm making You're mine right. today yeah. in a in a bubble. Yeah. Right. Um, oh. And Linda commented <laughs> sometimes leftovers are better than dinner. You're right. Um, yesterday, our Superstars of Thanksgiving show, or no, that was today. Um, today, the Superstars yeah. of Thanksgiving show is on today um, with Rachel, Sunny, and Emerald. And all three of them agreed that um, the biggest superstar of Thanksgiving is, the is actually the next day, the leftovers. Exactly. Especially, it was funny. Sunny was talking about, and I never really thought of it from this uh, perspective. Sunny was saying from like Halloween until like Easter is like eating season. Yeah. So when you work in food TV and food media, there's just, you're eating so much of the food all the time that I actually think like the leftovers get a little bit more creative. She was yeah. agreeing with us. We love Sunny. Yeah. Um, all right. So two, I had, um, I'm, like I'm said, I make, I'm making Rachel's. It's not easy being green bean casserole. Um, it's a really easy dish. Um, and it's, it's something different from like the canned soup mixes. I do love the canned soup yeah. green bean casserole, but I like this one. It's a little bit fresher. So I started with about a pound of cremini mushrooms that I just chopped really fine. I browned those really nicely in some butter. I added in um, two shallots. You just saw me add in a little bit of garlic and some fresh thyme. Um, so now I am going to, you're making a, a basic roux. So I'm just gonna top this with a little bit of flour and I have a whisk here. And you're just gonna let that cook up until it gets nice and nutty and fragrant. Um, Caroline commented and said that she makes shepherd's pie with her Ooh. leftover turkey and sides. Um, Sunny, like I said, today was on the show and she made a leftover green bean casserole and turkey pot pie, yeah. which was super easy. It was just like three ingredients, I think. Yeah, you guys have to pastry, check that out. Um, some green bean casserole and some turkey. Um, that was really, really good. She made it in muffin tins. It was really cute. An individual. Um, Marguerite commented and said, how do I find a cranberry recipe? Um, we actually, Tina made one yesterday um, on Facebook Live. It's this one right here that I'm actually using the leftovers of. Um, and it's Scott Conan's recipe. It's a Campari cranberry, so orange, and ginger um, dressing, and it's really, really good. It's super easy, too. 
I'm going to just to glaze the pan with a little bit of white wine, because yeah. in my house, white wine's always good. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to add in a little bit of heavy cream. And we're just getting, this is going to get thickened really quickly because we added in some flour. Um, and then Rachel adds this ingredient, which I really, really like. Um, she just uses one of those garlic and herb cheeses. Do you mind opening that? Oh, sure. Grant? Um, and I just grew up eating it. It's just really nostalgic flavor to me. I really, really like it. So she adds that into here, and that kind of just, like, it, it, it provides so much flavor to the dish. Yeah. Um, and it's already all built in there. So I'm just going to melt that into there. Marissa commented and said that they make a holiday hash in the morning um, with everything in a hot skillet with cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. I do love that. Thank I you, love Grant. the idea of using leftovers for breakfast. Me too. Because you've been cooking for three days. Ooh, Ooh speaking of leftover breakfast, yeah. VJ, give me a fork. I need to dig into that again. So, so you guys, yeah, VJ is um, it's VJ, beautiful. What is, what's the name of these again? I'm sorry. It's coffee. coffee. It's a patty. Okay. <laughs> We're calling it breakfast patty. It's a breakfast patty. <laughs> breakfast patty. There we go. Yeah. Do you want you to whisk that? Well. Yeah. No. I, I, I'm I'm gonna throw in my beans actually. All right. Yeah. And now I think our waffles are about done. I'm gonna open this plate up and see what he looks like. Ooh, <gasps> look at that stuffing wow, waffle. Wow. That, that smells delicious. Delicious. He's still a little tender, so I'm gonna let him keep cooking. My favorite part about making the stuffing in the waffle maker, I don't know if you ever said this before, is that like all the edges get so crispy yeah. again. And I know in my family we all fight over the crispy edges and stuffing. Yeah. So that's like every nook and cranny of delicious crispy I'm stuffing. Gonna taste that. Yeah, will you dump those into there for me? Yes. Yeah. Um so then all I just but yeah, I just blanched some green beans. Um like I said, I'm following Rachel's recipe. Sometimes I cheat and use mm. some frozen green beans. <laughs> That's Ooh. totally acceptable, this too. This is so good. It's like everything in Thanksgiving um, in our little patty. With an egg, with a beautifully with an fried egg. egg on top. You can do scramble eggs as well, wherever you prefer to have mm. your eggs yeah. in the morning. Yeah. This is yummy, BJ. Steven just commented yeah. and said, do you make turkey salad sandwiches or do anything special? I love, see, it's funny. Everybody always asks mm. what your favorite go-to um, Thanksgiving leftover recipe is. And Mine's actually just the traditional Thanksgiving, like kind of gobbler sandwich where you throw yeah. all of it. You and you guys know that you. I don't know if well, I'm outing myself now. You totally. I make that sandwich by like 9:30 on Thanksgiving. You know what I mean? Like yes. I am on the couch with like some delicious roll. I actually bought rolls the other day in anticipation for how excited I am for my Thanksgiving sandwich after Thanksgiving. Uh, Jane commented and asked me how the cider is. It's delicious. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Is this mine? I love it. Cheers again. I don't remember. Yeah. Um, and Crystal commented and said that she uses leftover green bean casserole to make a turkey noodle soup. Ooh. Casserole. I said soup, but that says casserole. She makes a casserole. <laughs> that sounds yummy. That All right, sounds I'm going to plate this yummy. stuffing off. I'm just and transferring um, my green bean casserole into a casserole dish. And um, Vijay is going to top it with one of our favorite ingredients. I love it. Which this. are um, crispy fried onions, which I think over the summer when we were doing Facebook Lives, we both kind of had the realization that these are very underutilized. Like, yeah. they come out during the holidays, but I put them in salads. We were putting Everything. them, like, you know, it's, it's fun. Five, stock up while they're really cheap right now at the grocery store and pop them on everything. All right, so I'm just going to pop it. Yeah, go for it. Sometimes I even mix them in. I really like their texture. So I'm just going to pop this in the oven. I have one working on the back counter. I'm having some issues getting my waffle out, so I'm just going to try to <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work. Oh, yeah. Yay. That worked. Here, great. Do you need this turkey to top it with? Heated up a little turkey. All right, guys, Fabulous. so here is Thank hot you. and bubbly and brown. This is, um, it's not easy being green bean casserole. Um, and again, you can totally make this today. Today's Tuesday. So you can make this yeah. today and cook it up on, on Thursday. Absolutely. Um, and so, yeah, this is how I make it. I promised you guys yesterday. And continue writing in any of your Thanksgiving questions because we are here to help you have a very All successful right. Thanksgiving. Here's a um, stuffing waffle. Oh, yes. That I just topped so it with some leftover turkey that I heated up in a pan. And now I'm going to top it with some... Yummy. Hey Grant, Lynn Ooh, commented, yummy. do we have any low carb or sugar free dessert ideas? Mm. <laughs> it's hard with the, it's hard with the desserts. Mm. I know. Um, we were saying like low sweet potato carb. pie is sometimes a little bit of a lower yeah. sugar option. Totally. Yesterday I think we that's a great idea. That. And Lynn also said now she's hungry. I know we were excited because yesterday we cooked up all this food and we couldn't eat it because we were saving it for today's leftover <laughs> show. So now we're gonna have a big yeah. Friendsgiving. Here's oh, our that looks waffle, so guys. great. So we have a stuffing waffle with some leftover turkey on top, some cranberry sauce. And an egg. Yeah. Why not? Everything is better with an egg. I think yeah. so. Denise just commented and asked, um, 
Um, if we have any ideas on how to make green bean casseroles without mushroom soup. Denise, I actually didn't use mushroom soup for this. If you're allergic to mushrooms, you can just completely omit them. Um, but this was just like a basic roux with um, some heavy cream and a little bit of cheese. Um, we tossed that all together. No soup, no mushroom soup necessary. I'm going to dig it on this stuffing waffle because that looks absolutely Wanda, delicious. I'm sorry. Wanda, yeah. Wanda says, how do you make stuffed bell pepper? Um, Go ahead. Easy. You can just like the same mixture that you might want to use for mm -hmm. your meatballs or your meatloaf. You can just uh, stuff that into the pepper mm -hmm. and just like bake it for, I, would, I bake it at 350 for about like 20 25 minutes it depends i love stuffed peppers yes mm -hmm. and i love to use the colorful ones i, I like color. to use all different colors as well because it makes it much more fun or is that the best idea what if you made a pepper stuffed with stuffing right a stuffing a stuffed stu pepper a stuffing. i have a pepper let's do it go get let's the pepper it. let's we've let's got some try. leftover <laughs> stuffing somewhere it's fun great. on the fly today guys great this stuffing waffle is so good um denise said that people say you can use cream of broccoli soup mm. or cream of mushroom soup or cream of chicken soup instead of cream of mushroom soup sounds That's a great. great idea great idea um and amanda from north carolina is watching hello amanda Hi, Amanda. i'm actually heading to south carolina hey. um after today yeah At, or today today yeah, you're getting on a plane today. to go to Doing south carolina <laughs> anyway barbara from florida hey, hi barbara, barbara. Um, all right well bj's grabbing that pepper I want to show you guys something. I actually want to try something for the first time. Ooh, yes. um, if you watch Rach on the show, you know that lately she's been um, really into this method of cooking poultry. She does it with chicken and she does, ooh, sorry. She does it with turkeys. Um, and the method is called spatchcocking, which kind of makes you giggle a little bit. But all, you, all it means is cutting the backbone out of a bird, so a, a turkey or a chicken. And um, she talks about it so much, and she's taught us how to do it so much, and we actually have a really great video of how to do it on our website. But I'm going to try it for the first time today, because actually I was I was reading about how it's like really nice, even cooking. It cooks really, really fast, and who doesn't want that on Thanksgiving? Yeah. Um, so Any way you can make the turkey faster, I think, is a great idea. It's a great idea. So I've got my two friends here, and they'll help me if I get stuck. But <laughs> um, Anna commented, thank you, thank you for the amazing waffle idea. Ooh. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> Susan, do I need to tent the turkey to keep it from over browning? Um, it sort of depends on the turkey. I yeah, think yeah. I just take a look at the turkey and while I'm basting it, if it looks like it's getting a little too brown, then I uh, put foil on top. I would say, you know, 75% of the time I end up using some foil, but you don't always have to. All right. So like I said, I am doing, I'm spatchcocking a bird for the very first time. And if I'm following our dear Rachel's instructions, it is you turn, you flip the turkey upside down and you find his backbone. Um, and again, I think you could probably ask your butcher in the store if he could do this for you as well, but why not try it? I mean, yeah. it's easy. Um, so then all you have to do is cut, get some nice sharp kitchen shears and you want to cut up the back. How am I doing so far? Good. Yeah? Yeah, he's, he's doing great. Moving. And once you find that backbone, you just kind of follow, follow it. Yeah. You know? And I'm excited that this is going to cook really fast. Do I cut this? Yep. Okay. Sure. <laughs> and then like go that way. And then go, oh, have I derailed yeah. a bit? <laughs> you, <laughs> Let's start kind this. Of, you, yeah, you railed <laughs> off the turkey trail a tiny bit. <laughs> I took a turn. Point. Okay, great. That's great. Uh, Valerie says hi from Nashville, Tennessee, and she loves y'all. Love y'all. Hey, Valerie. Love, love you too. Uh, love you back. Um, so we were talking about love whenever you spatchcock a turkey, um, uh, you, could, you can brine it, or you could also flavor it. Um, any way you like, but a lot of people yesterday were asking if you don't brine, um, what's a great way to flavor your turkey? And we were suggesting compound butter. Mm -hmm. That's how um, I make my turkey Which is normally. one of Rachel's um, tips. She does that every year. So I thought I'd show you guys how to make a quick compound butter while Jeanette's finishing up her spatchcock turkey. Um, and it's super easy. All you do is just throw on some softened butter into a food processor. Um, and you definitely want to add salt and pepper. So you grab those things. Oops. <laughs> Something just fell. <laughs> some salt. And a little bit of pepper. And after you have those three ingredients in your food processor, you can pretty much flavor this up however you'd like. Um, I like to throw herbs into it. I know this is what Rachel does as well. So we have some sage. Oh, yeah, do you want to throw some parsley in there, yeah, BJ? Why not? Some sage, um, a little bit of thyme. Um, and then from here, is you can good? just kind of get creative. Yeah, that looks great. Um, you can throw in some dry spices, some poultry seasoning. If you wanted to make a spicy turkey, um, you could get some chili powder and some cayenne, pretty much anything you'd like. Um, and you just throw it in here, you buzz it up until it's nice and smooth, and then you just lather this all over the turkey. Um, Jeanette, how's your spatch <laughs> It's going, going well. <laughs> Let's get a quick spatch it's, it's, update. It's, it's, we're getting a quick spatch update. Um, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. This isn't as hard as it looks. It really, it's, it's simple once you've got, once you understand what's happening. Um, how is your stuffing stuffed pepper, BJ? I actually stuff whatever I put in my patty into the bell pepper. Nice. Ooh. And, um... It's very simple. You we're guys. gonna bake it, and then we're gonna bake it we'll at 350. 
for about like 20, 25 minutes. Nice. Um, it's very easy. You can stuff the bell pepper with anything you like to. You can stuff it with veggies. It's a nice healthy dinner too. Really like absolutely. You can stuff it with the green bean casserole if you want to. Um, and Jakey says hi from Newark, Ohio. Oh, hello. Hello. Another Ohioan. Okay. Another fellow Ohioan. So I'm adding some uh, a lemon zest to our compound butter because I thought that would be kind of nice. But like I said before, you can add anything you'd like. And then, should we just buzz it up? Yes. Let's do it. I'm almost there. I feel like this is like a test of like, could I get this done before Graham finishes the it. compound butter? Crystal <laughs> is asking you guys how many sticks of butter should she use to keep the turkey from getting dry. Um, it depends on like how big the turkey is. I yeah. usually like to use about a stick or two sticks of butter. At the same time, I love butter and I love fat. So yeah, totally. I just go crazy. I say, you know, when in doubt, just add more butter because I'd rather exactly. have a turkey that has too much butter than a turkey that's Thanksgiving. Dry. And then you can use that all that fat that's falling from the butter to make your gravy afterwards. Um, my dad commented, Jeanette, she hey, said you should use, use a machete. Oh yeah, thanks. And I think as we just got one of those laying around. Yeah. Because you have your machete. Esmeralda's yes. your sister, <laughs> right? Yes. Hi, Hi, Esmeralda. Esmeralda. Um, she says hi from Philadelphia. All right, guys, so I did it. I you got this it. backbone out of the bird. Um, yeah. Really simple. And if you're telling me that just doing that is going to take, like, hours off cooking this turkey, I think that that's a really nice promise. Yeah. Um, to because, like, you're supposed, to, you're supposed to now crack oh, the, okay. this bone, right, Grant? Oh, yeah. Oh, just, it's like CPR. You, you just, like, turkey just strong. strong. <laughs> turkey CPR. <laughs> Where do you push it? <laughs> Should, we Should I do it already? No. I no, I didn't. So. All right, Grant. CJ, we'll do you want to try? Go ahead. So I feel like I'm gonna lift. Do it, do it. And I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if we give it a flip over. Oh, and then press it. And down. press it from this way. Ooh. Maybe, Grant, we might need your help. This is a stubborn <laughs> turkey. <laughs> this is just like the turkey yesterday. It's you time guys. to call your strong friend in. I'm gonna wash my hands. Oh, I think you may have done Did it. Did I do it? I kind of heard a crap. Oh, yes. There, it is. <laughs> there we and go. There goes Grant. We got it. Just call Grant if you need. To. I mean, if you have trouble with this at home, I, if you just like grab a kitchen stool, you can give yourself You're right. A I didn't leverage. have enough leverage. Yeah. It was it was it was your height that really um, helped. And then it's ready for the butter slather, right? Oh yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Do we have our butter? Oh, Where our butter go? Do you want me to slather it up yeah. since you guys are all washed? Since we're up? all washed up now. All right. Um, now, do you ever put butter under the skin? Oh, that's what I meant. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do like to put some butter on the outside because it gives your like skin a nice both. crispy brown. Who doesn't love um, some nice crispy skin? Turkey cover. I mean turkey. <laughs> Tiffany covers her turkey with bacon, you guys. Ooh, that's really Ooh, a good a idea. idea. That's yeah. one way of definitely ensuring that it'll stay nice and juicy. Yes. Yeah. Um, and Autumn says that she fries her turkey and it comes out yummy. Autumn, we were talking about that yesterday. Love a deep fried turkey. Yeah. Um, really, really yummy. Um, so this, so Grant's showing us how to um, throw some compound butter under the skin of your turkey, um, which is another way of keeping it nice and juicy oh, yes, if you don't brine it. Um, but I actually, you could probably do this if you brined it as well. Yeah, some extra is. flavor under the skin. Who doesn't love um, that? I think we also, this is a great way to um, cook your turkey a little bit faster. We also have another turkey back there. Oh, yeah, where'd it go? Um, VJ, where'd you put the turkey? Oh, it's right here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Carla Hall actually showed us this tip on the show um, just yesterday, right? right? Yeah. Um, and basically, um, her tip was if you accidentally sleep in, um, Which... instead of you know having a turkey come out of the oven really late, um, you just cut it into pieces, like you're carving a, a cooked turkey, and you just cook it in pieces. And that's what we did with this turkey, and it took like an hour and a half. It for took us, such. It was. It was such. We were joking because we were like, uh, we were gonna pop the whole thing in the oven today, and we were like, maybe we got to work 20 minutes later than we normally did. Yeah. So Grant just like butchered it right up and roasted it, and that is a really, really easy way to get your turkey done fast. I know I always go out the Wednesday night before Thanksgiving, so who doesn't oversleep just slightly on also, Thanksgiving? I was thinking this is really great too because then uh, once the turkey comes out of the oven and all your guests are at your house, you don't have to butcher the Bird. That's it's like already very done true. You. So you're yeah. sort of cutting off a step exactly. um, while everybody's over for Thanksgiving. That looks lovely. It saves you some extra Thanks. time. It, save, it does. Yeah. I know. Yummy. I want to eat some of this turkey. Um, Bob is asking how to defrost a turkey. Bob, that is a very good question. So tonight, today we are only two days away from Thanksgiving. So unless you've got a very small bird, um, you know, it, t it takes about four pounds per day um, to defrost in the refrigerator. So if your turkey's bigger than eight pounds, which I'm sure it is, you're gonna wanna use um, the cold water method, which is just take a really big bucket of your sink and you wanna put it into some cold water and change the water out every 30 minutes per pound of the bird, and that will get your bird defrosted really quickly. Absolutely. Or you could just leave the um, faucet on and let the water just drip on it, because you just want the water changing, and you want it to be cold. You don't wanna use warm water. Uh, and Norman would like to know about brining. Ooh, brining. Yes. Do you, you, have, you know the ratio better than I do. I do. So I it's, 
Anything it's, with numbers, I don't remember. <laughs> one gallon of water, one cup of sugar, and one cup of salt. And you can kind of change that up however you'd like. You can use apple cider as your liquid. You can use brown sugar as your sugar. Anything to add some fun different flavors is always yeah. nice. Cool. Um, yeah, that's how you brine. I mean, we have plenty of brine recipes on the website. Tons. Right? Rachel's got a really great whiskey one. Yeah. Speaking of whiskey, where's our cocktail? I know. Right? <laughs> I know. I don't. I lost mine. Um, all right. Do we have any more questions coming in? Oh yeah, I think it's a. Jane is saying, how long does it take to roast a turkey that is 28 pounds? Jane, that is a Ooh, feat. That a is a large, turkey. large turkey. Where where you even, find that? Is that even a turkey? I would break that pounds? down. I feel like that might take days to cook. <laughs> <laughs> Start cooking it now, Jane. Start cooking it now, James. <laughs> um, so do you, have you guys ever had any Thanksgiving disasters? I have, actually. And um, it was one that I actually could have. If you watched the show yesterday, <laughs> Jeff Morrow, uh, a pie fell on the floor, yeah. and he just ate it off the floor. He was a total champ. I mean, in my house, five-second rule totally goes. Um, but one year, I was living in our condo with my husband, and we have a really, really small kitchen, and so I was utilizing any ounce of space all over the whole kitchen, and so I have a little footstool, and I had cut all my Brussels sprouts, and I like laid them all flat, and they were all really perfect and ready to go in the oven, and he opened the door and came to give me a hug and knocked the tray of Brussels sprouts all over the floor, and I was just like, I don't even know what to do. My guests are coming in an hour, the grocery store is closed, so we didn't have Brussels sprouts that year. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my biggest Thanksgiving disaster. How about you guys? Um, you any? I have to think about it. I Come can't think of me. one for Thanksgiving, but I remember for um, the holidays one year, my friend Kate and I were hosting a holiday party, and she made a punch, and she brought over these frozen strawberries to like put in the punch, and I was like, I'll put it in the freezer until people come over. Uh -uh. And then people came over, so she went to the freezer to grab the punch, and, or to grab the strawberries and she threw them in the punch and everybody was tasting the punch and we were like, this tastes really funny. And then I looked in the punch and on top were like frozen red peppers. So she had gone <laughs> into the freezer and thought that the red peppers were strawberries and threw them into the punch. So oh we had a really uh, bad punch, but the tequila was still fine. <laughs> uh, so we had that I stuff. like that. Uh, Linda from Kansas says Hi, Linda. Hi, Linda. Hi, Linda. Um, and Donna has a very small oven, so she's going to spatchcock. So Definitely. Yeah, yes. It cooks so fast. Um, and Richard asks, what do I do if my uh, turkey hasn't defrosted in time? I would just use the cold water trick again. Just yeah. really kind of keep going at it. You can't cook a frozen turkey, so yeah. just keep trying to defrost it. Yeah. BJ, why don't we see what your stuffed pepper's up to? Is oh, that, yeah. that cooked it anymore? It it's still cooking. It's still cooking? Okay. Yes. Maybe we'll try and post a picture of it later once it's roasted a little bit more. But I really like that as a fun on the fly yeah, leftover Thanksgiving yes, idea. Um, all right, guys. Well, um, all of these recipes are going to be up on the Facebook page later today. So make sure you come and check those out. If you're still looking for some Thanksgiving recipes to make on Thursday, go to our website because we have a ton um, of Thanksgiving content, as well as all the disasters that you saw in yesterday's show. If you need to reference any of those on Thursday, those are also on the website. Yeah. So make sure you check those out. Um, and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you so much for joining happy us. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. I hope you had a happy Thanksgiving. And if you like what you saw today, make sure you like, comment, share, and cook. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Cheers. everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Cheers. These are good. Yes, they are. Mm.